Hey Wolfpack and welcome back. I hope all is well, and I hope you enjoyed your week. Today, we're reading My Mother Has a Special Weekly Routine, But Lately, She's Been a Little Bit Off, written by Like I Did. Now with that said, whether you're sitting around a campfire, on the night shift, or even laying in bed, let my voice soothe your nightmares. My mother had always been just a little peculiar. She liked doing things a specific way, and always on one specific day. There was a routine she found herself in since I was just a child, and no matter the situation, the weather, or her mood, the routine would never vary. On Mondays, she did the planning. She would spend early noon making a list, always on paper, about all the meals we would have that week. Then, she would go through the cupboards and the fridge to see what we still had, and added everything we needed to the list. In her perfect cursive handwriting, of course. On Tuesdays, she would go to the fish market just before sunrise, continue to visit the butcher around noon, and finally buy all the other items we needed from the big grocery store just at the outskirts of our suburban neighborhood. On Wednesdays, she cleaned, or rather, we cleaned. While mom liked things a specific way, and would usually go over whatever I did after I was finished, she did always accept my help. I suppose it was more for building my character than an actual need of help. On Thursdays, she did laundry. When the sun was shining, she would hang the clothes on a line out in the garden, and if she didn't, she would use the dryer inside. Either way, Thursdays always smelled like lavender softener. On Fridays, she baked muffins and cake and biscuits. With many spices and herbs, she would make her own creations. Those were the only days that smelled even better than Thursdays. On Saturdays, she would go for a drink. When I was younger, that's when the babysitter would come, but now, she could go without having to take care of that. Sometimes, she would even see her friends and come back in a giggly mood. Sundays were what we called free days. It was the only day that was not assigned to one specific task. We work during the week so that the weekend can be enjoyed. I heard that sentence more often than I could ever count. As I said, my mother had always been a little peculiar, and as I grew older, I realized she was also a little, if not a lot, compulsive. In all my years in life that I lived in that small suburban house with my mother, I never saw her deviate from that schedule. Of course, I wasn't always there to observe, but when I came home from school on Tuesdays, the fridge and cupboards would be fully stocked again. Thursdays would smell like lavender, and Friday we always had fresh baked goods. Even on holiday, she would find ways to squeeze in whatever needed to be done on the specific days of the week. My mother wasn't always entirely mentally stable, which is something hard to witness as a child and especially to admit. You want your parents to always do well, and tell yourself that they are fine even when they're not. However, in most ways, she luckily seemed to be in control of her compulsions. And, most of all, she was always kind and loving. To both of us, despite the occasional fight, especially as I grew older and resented her slightly old-fashioned ways, still, we were a happy family, and in general, things were alright. Until last week, when my mother, for the first time, ever since I can remember, seemed to be out of sync. It started on Monday, when I woke up and found my mother in the living room, watching something strange on TV. The sight of that was weird enough already, because normally, she would never turn on the television by herself, before evening, and now she was sitting there, wearing her flowery dress and the high heels inside, while watching something with complete focus in her eyes. Mom? I muttered. Her head slowly turned to the left. She looked up at me and looked at me precisely. No words came out of her mouth. When I looked over at the screen to see what she had been so mesmerized by, I noticed the white noise. There was no channel on. I sat down next to her, tried to find the words to ask what was wrong, but I couldn't. She was acting as if everything was perfectly normal until dad came down the stairs with his briefcase in hand. Good afternoon, honey. Are you ready for lunch? She asked him. 
My father tilted his head. He could tell that something was wrong. But he didn't mention it either. Instead, he only lifted his briefcase a little and said, I must go to work. But of course, my mother smiled. I exchanged a concerned look with my father. He definitely knew that something was up and I wondered whether they had a fight last night. Was that why mom was acting strange? Before I could talk to him, however, he had disappeared, and mom jumped up only two seconds later. I need to go to the dry cleaners. You can make yourself something to eat, yes? On Tuesday, I didn't expect to see my mother when I got up. At this time, she normally would be at the fish market to get the freshest catch. Instead, I found her by the kitchen table, nervously writing something down. My dad was sitting opposite of her, having scrambled eggs and bacon. Are you making a shopping list? I asked. It was the wrong day, but at least she was acting a little more normal, even though she was wearing the exact same dress as the day before. My mother smiled and nodded. Yes, is there anything you need? Eggs and milk. We're out of cornflakes too. She nodded. Good morning, kiddo, Dad said. They were both sitting together, having breakfast, and so I thought that things were back to normal again. He emptied his coffee and got up. Time for work, he called out. Oh, honey, could you get some groceries on your way back? Salt, fish, and vinegar, please? Again, my father and I exchanged a look of confusion. Well, the one of mine was the one of confusion, but his look seemed to be of distress. I nodded to silently tell him that I have things in control. Dad nodded back and then proceeded to head to the door. Of course, honey. On Wednesday, I found her in the garden digging up dirt. The exact opposite of what we normally would be doing on that day. She was digging a hole, big and wide, and I simply couldn't say what on earth she might need it for. Dad was gone before I had woken up, so I couldn't talk to him, but I promised myself I would do so tonight. Something was wrong with my mother. At first, I was worried, but I started getting a bit scared, both for her and of her. Is something wrong? My father asked that evening. It was difficult to find a moment alone. Mom always seemed to be somehow around. I hated that I had to get away from her to voice my concerns, but I was worried that she wasn't entirely stable. She didn't do anything she normally does. And did you see that hole outside, Dad? I paused for a moment. I think she might really need help. Dad tilted his head and looked through the window to the garden. I suppose he hadn't seen the hole out there earlier. I won't go to work tomorrow. I'll stay here with you. Is that all right? I sighed in relief. Together, we might be able to figure out what was going on and maybe he could start a conversation with her. Yes. Thanks, Dad. I think that would be really helpful. Thursday. I found Mom in the garden again. Normally, this wouldn't be so strange as I would usually find her there hanging up the sheets. However, this Thursday, it was stormy outside. It had been raining all morning and it didn't appear as if it would end anytime soon. What are you doing? It's pouring cats and dogs. I shouted from the garden. Dad who heard me shouting had appeared behind me and was holding my shoulder. No cats and dogs, fish. Mom turned around and laughed. And that is when we saw what she really was doing out there. She was hanging the chopped off heads of the fish Dad had brought home on the clothesline. Mom? I could only bring out a whisper. Something is wrong, we need to help her. Before I could move, Dad was already running outside and guiding my mother back to her living room. Thursday turned into Friday without a moment of sleep, at least for me. I couldn't close my eyes without heads of fish appearing in the front of my mind, and the sight of my mother in the same damn dress and that plastered on smile. Tired and exhausted, I stumbled down the stairs to find my parents both sitting in front of the television. I didn't even bother talking to them and went straight to the kitchen. For the first time in years, we had no sweet smell coming from it. No, instead, the stench of vinegar made its way to my nose. We hardly had any food in the house. I suppose Mom had completely forgotten about it, and Dad didn't want to leave her in her current stage. He hardly left her side anymore. Without talking to them, I started with all the chores of the past days, wrote a shopping list. I cleaned and threw some clothes in the washing machine. 
This might sound as if I only wanted my mother to get back to doing the household, but I swear it had nothing to do with that. I simply was worried because she wasn't herself anymore. The following morning, all the items that I wrote on the list were sitting in paper bags on the kitchen counter. I assumed that Dad had gotten out to buy them. On Saturday, she did the most terrifying thing so far. A sight I will not be able to delete from my mind anytime soon. It started only in the evening. The entire day, both my parents were acting normal. Mom even cooked and we sat around the table, talking and laughing. She did most of the talking and I could have sworn she was entirely herself again. Or, she had learned to adapt. At least, in some ways. When night came, however, everything turned entirely messed up. I woke up from the sound of a loud clatter and immediately jumped out of bed. I had been a nervous wreck lately and it didn't take much to startle me. The sound was coming from downstairs and my initial thought was that someone had broken in but then I heard my mother humming something from downstairs. Mom? I called out. Go to bed child. She shouted back but I was already making my way up the stairs. She had painted the walls with strange anagrams using red paint. Still wearing the same dress, she looked up and smiled, but this time it appeared far less sincere. I believe I even saw a twitch in her eye. Dad was sitting on a chair next to her. Mom, we need to get you help. I'll call the hospital, okay? No, no, I will help, Dad said, and took the paint can from her hand. A tear rolled down her cheek, but the smile never disappeared. Why, thank you, honey. Families help each other. Dad smiled back. Yes, well, I should go buy more paint. The child will help me. Mom said. Dad glanced at me. What the fuck? It's the middle of the night. Look, Mom, I'm really sorry, but... She held my mouth shut with her hand before I could say another word. We have to buy paint. Any normal mother and her child do just that. It is of utter importance for a decent home. Dad looked around at the red paint on the wall and my mother's face and finally said the last thing I expected. That sounds perfectly reasonable. See you soon, honey. I had no idea what to do. It seemed that both my parents had lost their minds, but I couldn't possibly let my mother leave on her own or let her drive a car in that state. So I went outside with her and sat behind the steering wheel with the intention to drive her to a hospital. However, as soon as I started driving, I couldn't for the life of me remember what direction I had to go. Just keep going straight and follow the street, my mother finally said. Her smile had disappeared and her leg was shaking. Just keep going, honey. I had no idea what to say, and so I kept going straight until we had the left, the neighborhood, and the surrounding area as well. We found ourselves on the freeway when I couldn't hold it in anymore. I found the nearest exit and stopped. My mother was trembling and in the dark light with the splatters of red paint on her face, I finally realized that I might have made a huge mistake. Mom? I hardly brought out the word. She opened her mouth, but no words came out at first. She swallowed and then finally spoke. I'm so sorry, my love. I didn't want to believe it. It made no sense. What are you talking about? She looked at me as if I was the one losing my mind. That thing in there, that, that was not your father. Didn't you notice? At first, I thought I would only act slightly differently to see if he would notice that something was off, but it only copied whenever we were doing or saying. She took a deep breath. I woke up a few times at night. It never sleeps. It sits in the bed with its eyes open waiting for us to wake up. I, I'm so sorry. I just couldn't believe it at first. I thought maybe something was wrong with your father. We should have left or called for help, but... She stayed silent for a moment. My memories were blurry and I had to make sure first, make sure that it was him and not me. My palms wouldn't stop sweating and my head started racing like crazy. This whole week, I had been so focused on my mother, I didn't notice that dad only agreed to the things I was saying. He didn't do anything and suddenly it felt as if something shattered in my mind. My mother had always been a little peculiar especially after my father passed away. Mom, that wasn't our home, was it? I gulped. How did we end up there? She looked at me, a reflection of my own fear and confusion. I have absolutely no idea. 
It must have lured us in and made us forget. Thanks for watching, Wolfpack. If you want to catch me by the fire next time, I upload every weekend including Friday. Don't forget to like the video as it helps me out more than you know. If you want to submit your story, head down to the description. Now, here's Roken to howl you off to sleep. Have beautiful nightmares.